Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai, welcome to C++ programming session. In today's session, I'll be teaching you string operations with the help of operator overloading. That is, I'll be doing multiple operations on the string object with the help of operator overloading. Before going into deep, I do expect that you have a basic knowledge of operator overloading. I just give you an overview those for those who, who just want to get refreshed. Operator overloading is one of the features of C++ with the help of which we can give additional meanings to the operators which is available. Operators like plus, minus, double equal to, less than, greater than, equal to. That is, if suppose I am having a class student and I want to do some operations on the object of the class student that to an operation with the help of operators then I have to overload those operators in my class because operators only work with built-in data types so if you want to the operators to be working with your user-defined data types then you have to define or you have to overload that particular operators in that particular class so in my definitions I have to do an operator overloading on string there is in C++ if you want to do a string there are two major possibilities either you can create a character array or else you can use a string class which is an inbuilt class which has been newly been introduced okay in my definitions in my program I'll be creating a completely new my own string class okay instead of using inbuilt string class I'll be using I'll be creating my own string class and I'll be performing those operations with the help of operator overloading let's start creating it as such the program will be quite difficult to create at the, on the online okay so I have created I don't want to waste the time I've already created the program with all the operations I'll be just explaining you exactly what is to be done in this program okay it will take much time if I will be typing in front of this video so I have just created the program first and I'll be explaining you what I'll be doing in this first part I have included two header files IO stream is quite common but why I need a string.h string.h header file is being used because all these operators in build I'll be using uh, some operations like length copy compare and all those things for that I'll be using the string.h header file okay so I've included those using namespace std I have created simply a my string class I have created two variables inside it character pointer and integer len Okay, len will be having the length of my string. Okay, and character pointer is used because I want to use a uh, use the concept of dynamic memory locations. As I've told you that we can create a array with the help of character array, or else we can do a string one. But there is a possibility that we can instead of array, we can use pointers. Okay, but here I'm used pointers because I want to use the concept of dynamic memory locations. Let's see what I want to do it. Okay, in the character value, as and when it required, it will allocate the memory. Let's see first. If in case the user is creating an object of my string class, and it is not passing, he is not passing any arguments. In that case, the length will be zero, and my pointer will be set to null. I've used destructor so that all the objects which of my class will be destroyed as and when the scope is been deleted. Let's go into the constructor. My string. I'm having a my string cons uh, constructor with an argument as character pointer. Whatever value, if in case user is passing some character array to this particular constructor, will be called. Okay. All the value will be stored in the pointer s. I'll be first getting the length of the string. That's the first and more most things. I'll get appropriate memory allocation for me for the value variable. That is my character variable. Okay. So I have created the value is equal to new. That's a dynamic memory allocation concept. New character. I am specifying him what the size I require. Dynamic memory allocation. So whatever the length of the string plus one, I much that much memory I am required. So I have allocated the space, and now I need to copy the values. So values in the s, I'll use strcpy and I'll copy manually all values from s to my value variable. So with this help of this concept, I'm getting the values into the my variables. Second option is, is it is possible that user creates the object of my string class and he pass an argument as an object. Then in that case, I require copy constructor concept. In that also, nothing special I've done. I've simply calculated the length. Accordingly, I allocated the memory and strcpy, I copied the values. Let's get into the program. Now, what is the need? So I've created two objects. 
my string str1 as my first name we know and my string str2 that is the second object with value as my surname that is play let's print those value str1 dot display display is nothing special I've done I've just checked before printing the values whether the length is equal to equal to zero then the string is empty okay and if if that is not the case then I'm just simply printing the value so I've created two object of my class my string str1 and str2 I've assigned some values with the help of constructor and I have just shown those values let's try and run this program so it is working it's showing me the output that is we know this the first array value and the second object is having my last name Pillai. let's get into something new suppose I have another string or my requirement is to combine both str1's value and str2's value and store into an another string so first of all I'll get another object that is str3 I've declared it now I'm not initialize any value so it's a default length will be 0 and character pointer will be pointing to null str3 is equal to str1 plus str2 now as and when I use the plus operator okay it is a it will be seeing that the first str1 and 2 that is the value which is forward and backward of that operator is an object so it will say I'll not able to process unless and until you overload the plus operator into the, your class my string because str1 and str2 are objects of my string class so it is a binary I can do this with the help of two options either I can use simple function or else I can use friend function concept okay I'll be using in this particular program the friend function so friend function binary plus operator have to overload so friend function binary takes two arguments let's go into the program so the logic comes right here okay so this is the one I've created I've created friend okay my string because I want to return the result so str3 will be getting the value which has been combined by str1 and 2 okay so my string I have to return an object of str3 so I have created an object of uh, of type as my string operator is the keyword is required plus is the operator I want to overload the two values which I will be passing str1 and str2 are of type my string so I have created two temporary object of my string types okay so value will be copied str1 value will be copied to obj1 and str2's value will be copied to obj2 I have created a temporary object obj3 now first of all obj3 I want to allocate the memory so I have to get the size how much memory is to be allocated so obj3 dot length I am specifying it in the objects length I want to have length as much as obj1's length plus obj2's length so I got an idea that this much length is required now comes the memory allocation so value is also I am having a variable because I am also an object of my, my string so value variable I am saying new character array obj3 dot length plus one whatever length you have allocated just plus one it that much space allocate to me so obj3 is now ready to accept the value of obj1 and 2 now first of all I have copied obj1's value to obj3 value so one is copied now I want to put obj2 at the at the last of obj3 so I've used strcat com function to combine the strings so obj3 will combine with the obj2 and finally after doing all the operations I'm telling return the obj3 so obj3 will be returned and it will be copied to str3 so once I'll say str3 dot display I'll be expecting 3 dot display so I'm expecting an answer we know space play let's see whether it's working or not I compiled it I run it so I'm getting the result so plus operator is working fine okay similarly if suppose you want to check if str1 is equal to equal to str2 or something like operations we'll be seeing this many operators plus operator I have already shown you let's see now double equal to operator if you want to compare two strings that if str1 is equal to equal to str2 or not see out I'm just printing condition is true if that is not the case is false okay now what I've done is here is str1 equal to str2 I'm asking okay so 
whenever I'm using such a thing again I'm using double equal to operator so it says str1 and 2 which is the value forward and backward of that operator is an object so it will not be processed unless and, un unless and until you overload the double equal to operator in your class my string okay but if I am using s double equal to operator in the if condition so if condition means that is equal to equal to 1 that is it should return an integer value that will be more helpful let's go into double equal to operator okay so what I have done I have created again a friend function integer is my return type okay operator is the keyword double equal to is the operator I want to overload the two objects I'll be copying is obj1 and obj2 that is str1's value will be copied to obj1 and str2's value will be copied to obj2 okay now I'm checking if integer real equal to 0 okay that I'm value I'm putting if I'm comparing string compare if you remember the string dot h is having a string compare function which will help us to compare the values and if the both the values are same it will return a zero so I'm simply using string compare obj1 equal to equal to obj1 dot value comma obj2 dot value that is the both objects value whether they are same or not if both are same it will return a value as zero and if it is returning zero that means the condition is true for me so I'm setting the real value as one and I'm returning real okay so real will be returned from here and will go to the if condition if both are same it will say the condition is true let's try I know that it is not same but I just want to check whether it is working or not I saved it I compile it I run it it says the condition is false because I know that both the strings are not same let's try and make both as Vinod now I know that both are same let's check it up I compiled it I ran it and now it says the condition is true which was previously being saying it was false Similarly, I can say I can check if str1 is less than equal to less than or greater than or greater than equal to that particular str2 or not. So again, here same concept: str1 is an object and str2 is an object. And you like to use less than or greater than operators, you have to overload that operators. Generally, use these operators with if condition only, so it is better to return some integer value that is one and zero, which specifies whether the condition is true or false. Let's get into the program. I'll show two of them if str1 less than str2 so str1's value will be copied to obj1 str2's value copied to obj2 simply same concept I've used integer real is equal to 0 teacher result is equal to 0 real is equal to string compare obj1 comma obj2 value now if you remember obj1 if obj1 is smaller than obj2 it will return an real less than 0 I've used that concept you should know that